Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So the dust has settled on Eurovision 2023. We have our win of Sweden, our runner up Finland and our third place Israel. A week has gone by and I have now had the opportunity to really think about the results and mull over a very important question which I think has come into a lot of people's heads after the results, which is, do we need the juries? What role do the juries play in Eurovision? And is their 50% share of the vote incredibly necessary? How much influence do they have over the results? Some very important questions. And this video today is going to be a deep dive and analysis of the jury results and going through everything, drawing a conclusion and answering the question, do we need the juries? Now I want to put a disclaimer out there and I don't want this video to be taken as me trying to devalue Sweden's win or advocate for a different winner. This is not what this video is going to be about. We have a winner this year. Lorene won fair and square. She won because she won the jury vote and she came second in the televote. She had the most points and I do not want to do what a lot of people have been doing and there's been a lot of backlash and anger and that is put hate on the contestants. That is absolutely wrong on so many levels. The vitriol that I've seen in the comment sections, particularly of the tattoo live performance, really, really angered me. And this video is not going to be a who should have won kind of video. This is just a deep dive into the jury results. Now, I think the results this year have been very important because they have kind of shown a couple of cracks in the juries and the role that the juries play. And it really has come to light in a lot of people's heads, especially people that aren't Eurovision fans, even just people that tuned in on the night, people that just watch the contest once a year. It was in national newspapers. It was on the news. It was very important and it's kind of something that I think has to be addressed and has to be spoken about in a way that doesn't offend the artists, in a way that doesn't throw hate towards anyone, but in a fair and honest conversation and that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to split this video into five parts and I will timestamp it so you can skip to any part you want to watch. But I would strongly encourage you to watch the video from start to finish because I don't want any of my words to be taken out of context or for people to kind of only see one bit and not realise that I've had a pretext beforehand. So it's important, I think, that you stick through the video. But if you don't, that's fine. But if you want to leave a comment on this video, please be respectful and fair towards myself and towards other people in the comments as much as you possibly can. So I'm going to structure this video as follows. Firstly, I'm going to look at the jury results at face value. So just the totals, the order, that kind of thing. And then I'm going to have a deep dive into the juries. Who are the juries from each country? What were their voting patterns like? And then what I'm going to do is predict the most objective form of the jury results using the criteria that the juries are given to mark each song. And then I'm going to extrapolate that and create basically a point system where each song has been ranked from first to 26th in the grand final and then compare that to the actual results. So that will be interesting, but that will be as most objective as possible. OK, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be as objective as humanly possible from me. And then I'm going to be going through the poll that I left on my channel page. So 2,300 people plus voted on a poll where I asked a very important question about how you interpreted the distribution of the jury points this year and then reading a couple of the comments that stood out to me under that poll. And then to close the video, I'm going to be giving a conclusion and suggestions as to whether we need the juries and if so, how can we improve the juries and the system that is in place. So a little bit of background about myself, if you don't know. So my name is Rachel and I am a classically trained musician. I have a music degree and I've been playing classical music for 15 years now. Plus, I am classically trained in the piano and on the oboe and I've played in many orchestras and I also compose my own music but it's mainly a kind of modern classical style. So that is my area of expertise which I will try to bring to my analysis here. So we'll start off by looking at part one of the video which is going to be looking at the jury results, face value, 
the order and the points. So of course, Sweden won the jury vote with 340 points this year. It's practically a landslide in the jury. And the second place, which was Israel, got 177 points. So almost half, almost half of what Lorene was given. So there was a huge gap between Israel and Sweden. It's something that I don't think we've seen before in the results. And that's what really caught my eye. It was this landslide which I think a lot of people felt underwhelmed with, firstly, because when Sweden were given 340 points in the jury, it's almost impossible to catch that with a televote score. It's very difficult. And then we had Italy with 176 points in third, so just one point behind Israel. And then 26 points behind Italy was Finland in fourth place, which was an interesting result because a lot of people were not expecting Finland to crack the top five of the jury results. And then in fifth, we had Estonia with 146. Sixth, we had Australia with 130. And in seventh, we had Belgium, eighth, Austria, ninth, Spain, and 10, Czechia. So it was an interesting top 10 of the jury results. But what really struck me here was just the distribution of points across all 26. So we had 340 for Sweden, and then we had three for Germany in last. So there was a very, very big concentration of points at the top and then a sprinkling of points at the bottom. Now it's normal in Eurovision, I think, to have points kind of below 15 with the bottom five, which is what we got in the juries. But to have such a huge amount of points at the top and the second place being 177, that was very interesting. In 2021, I think the top four songs in the jury vote were all above 200 points. So I think Malta, Italy, Switzerland and France all had above 200 points. While in this case, nobody below first place cracked 200 points. So that was very interesting to me. So Sweden were getting an average of about 10 points from every country. They got points from every country in the jury vote. And I don't believe anyone else had that amount. So that was very interesting to me. Also something that stuck out here was Estonia in fifth place. So that one I think wasn't on a lot of people's radars this year, but Estonia being in fifth was something I was expecting, maybe 10th, not fifth. So there was a huge amount of points and that's something I want to explore further in the video. And then of course we had Cyprus in 13th place. That also was quite surprising because this one I don't think was a jury magnet as such besides the vocals. So the fact that they managed to crack on the left hand side of the scoreboard here was quite interesting. And then right at the bottom we have Germany with three points. Now that one really, really angered me. And this is just personal opinion. But three points based on the system that they have in place to vote for songs. They have four criteria. Three points. I don't understand it and I'm going to dive into that later. So some very interesting results here and now we're going to look at these in detail. So I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the jurors themselves and their backgrounds and then looking at patterns in their voting and that kind of thing. So what I did is I went on the Eurovision website where they published all of the jurors for each country so there was a maximum of five jurors for each country besides two Ireland and Latvia who had four jurors that were published I'm not sure whether there was a fifth that just got discounted I don't know so I've used what has been given to us on the Eurovision website and then I basically did a google search of each juror and try to find as much information as humanly possible about them. So their age, what their level of expertise was, their music background, what kind of genre that they worked in. And there was some that I couldn't find any information about. So I basically just allocated them the average age and then assigned them to the category unknown because we don't have enough information about them. And that's one of the things that I think needs to be proposed to the EBU is we need to have the age of each genre published and we also need to see what background they are from, because we need to know, firstly, are they a musician? What level of expertise do they have? And why do they have so much voting power in the Eurovision Song Contest? It's very, very vital that we get that transparency from the EBU. So, you know, a Google search is not going to be enough sometimes to find out the 
very, very most accurate information. So what I've got here is not going to be 100% accurate. But the first thing that I did was calculate the average age of the jurors, which was in this case 45 years old. 1974 seemed to be a date that came up a lot for the date of birth. So 45 years old doesn't surprise me here. It's quite old, I think, in comparison to the average age of the contestants, which I calculated based on information that we had available, which is 29 years old. So in fact, Caria is like the bang on average age of the contestants this year at Eurovision and some members of Vesna as well. So there's a 16 year age gap between the average age of the juries and the average age of the contestants. So already we've got this disadvantage between songs that have more of an appeal towards slightly older people and songs that maybe might be seen more as out of the box, which have more of an appeal to younger people. And if the jury is overwhelmingly 45 years old, Gen X, born in 1970s, whilst the contestants are overwhelmingly born in the 90s and are more millennials and Gen Z, there's a really big mismatch there in terms of music taste, level of expertise, that kind of thing. So the oldest jury member that I was able to find, I believe is 82 years old, and the youngest was 22 years old. Whilst with the contestants, the oldest contestant we had on record was from Let3, they're 61, and the youngest was Victor Vernikos from Greece, who is 16. So a massive, massive difference between the ages of the juries, and that already puts certain people at a disadvantage and certain people at an advantage. And the next thing I did was then done some background research on each jury member and occasionally there was some previous contestants. I know Alex Callier from Belgium, who represented Belgium with Hoover Phonic a couple of years ago, he was on the jury. Albina was also on the jury, Constractor. So there were some previous contestants but there was also some relatively unknown people who were more like music teachers, music producers, a lot of TV people as well. But here what I've done is put together a pie chart of the area of expertise of the juries and as you can see here overwhelmingly pop music professionals were in the jury 54.6 percent of the jury as what I could find was made up of pop music professionals and then we also had 12.6 percent classical music professionals whether that be conductors composers film score composers professional performers that kind of thing 12.6 percent so that's where I would put myself in the category because that's my area of expertise but that is quite an overwhelming amount you know that's an eighth of the juries being classical music professionals we also had music producers making up about 4.9 percent of the proportion we also had tv and film people 9.3 percent rock musicians 3.8 percent R&B professionals were 1.1 percent electronic music professionals 1.1 percent jazz I think we had one jazz musician in there which was half a percent of the population other was 3.3 percent so there was a couple of Olympians footballers TV presenters that kind of thing and then unknown 4.4 percent there was just not really enough information available on Google about the jury members so I just had to make them unknown in this pie chart but as you can see here overwhelmingly pop music professionals majority at nearly 55 percent and then what I did is I looked at each genre that the contestants brought this year and made a comparing pie chart for that and as you can see here 37.8 percent of the songs were pop music so in comparison to the juries 54.6 percent versus 37.8 percent so the juries are overwhelmingly going to be in favour of the pop music. Now also that because they are more knowledgeable in pop music, they could also have more ability to criticise some of the pop songs. So that does put them at a slight disadvantage as well. But of course, pop made up the most. The second biggest category this year was ethnic music at 21.6%. Now I categorised ethnic music as being kind of not Western pop music basically but also not rock music not jazz so I counted things like Portugal as ethnic music because I do think that kind of ticks the box Spain as well things like that 21.6% so nearly a quarter of the songs this year were ethnic but the juries only made up 4.4% so that puts ethnic music at a massive disadvantage at the competition and that really really shocked me this year and then of course we had indie pop and indie rock 
in there. So indie rock, 13.5% and indie pop, 8.1%. I didn't count the people that were indie pop, so like Netherlands as pop pop music, because it is slightly different in terms of the instruments used in the backing track. So I didn't want to count it in there. If you did, it still would make pop music less than the juries made up of pop music there. And then we had, of course, alt rock. So that was like Croatia, 2.7% electronic. So we had Luke Black, 2.7% R&B. So we had Ukraine and Armenia in there, 5.4%. And then Rap, Karia with 2.7%. So you can see that the juries were not particularly representing the genres that the contestants were bringing to the table, most evidently in ethnic music. And I thought that was quite shocking. That is something I would absolutely change about the juries. You cannot have an overwhelming amount of pop musicians and classical musicians when most of the people bringing music this year were not bringing pop music, if you know what I mean. That's just unfair. Rappers, not a single rapper I could find in my research on the juries. But Karia was bringing a rap song. That doesn't make sense. We need to have in the juries at least four rappers because then that puts Karia at a disadvantage when people are looking at vocals for instance they'll just be looking at his singing vocals but not assessing the rap in the most kind of in a way that contains a little bit of personal expertise that's what I find evidently wrong about the makeup of the juries this year so it really does feel like there's a massive push towards pop music here and what we had available and not enough especially towards ethnic music music that is basically not western pop music it feels very very kind of skewed and i think that was shown in the results this year so that really stood out to me so the next thing i did was rank each jury in terms of the average age of each jury from oldest to youngest and then i also added some details of what was the majority of their level of expertise. And as you can see here, it was mainly pop music, but we also had some classical juries like Azerbaijan and Albania, a rock music jury from Australia, TV and film came from Cyprus and Georgia. And then we had a couple of mixed juries as well, where there was basically a different perspective from every single juror in there. There might have been a rock musician, a pop musician, an ethnic musician, a classical musician, and maybe a, a music producer in there. So that was really interesting. And as you can see, the oldest jury members came from Romania, Finland, Italy, Greece, and Albania from what I had available on Google. And the youngest juries came from Netherlands, Sweden, Spain, Iceland and Ireland. And all of those jurors were pop, basically, experts. So I thought that was very, very interesting to see this kind of age range. And by far, Ireland had the youngest jury, which is interesting, sort of 33, 34 years old. Romania, 53, 54 years old. It feels like a lot of our jurors here were kind of above the age of 40. So I wanted to then pick a couple of songs to look at in detail, songs that were sort of not quite pop music, but out of the box or more like a classical feel. So of course, the first one I wanted to look at was Finland, because Finland was very, very much out of the box, different, polarising, bringing rap music, metal music, that sort of thing. And you can see here that you know, the oldest juries in terms of average completely blanked Finland. No points at all. No points at all. Everyone whose jury was over the age of 50, averagely, blanked Finland. And then you see France and down here, the youngest jurors, so the, you know, the bottom five here, all gave Finland, you know, within the top three, besides Spain, who gave it one point. So that really makes a lot of sense to me. You know, the younger people were slightly more open-minded potentially to different songs, songs with different genres. So I thought that was very interesting. Most of his points were concentrated sort of below the age of 50 here. And then I also wanted to look at Spain, who came ninth in the juries, but had a, a song that was sort of also ethnic, different, very daring, very experimental. And you can also see that, you know, the oldest jurors here, so the four oldest jurors 
didn't give Spain any points um, and most of her points were concentrated in the middle. 10 coming from Portugal, but that makes a bit of sense because of cultural aspects. And then eight coming from Latvia. So it felt kind of, you know, like Spain was also blanked by the older members of the jury. So that was interesting. And then I wanted to look at Germany because this one really interested me. Germany was blanked by pretty much everyone, apart from her getting three points. A point from Czechia and two points from Iceland. So a couple of the younger juries gave Germany points. But that is exactly where this jury system really falls down. Because Lord of the Lost were a metal band, for instance, and the vocal ability of the lead singer was completely undermined by this jury system. As we saw here, you know, 3.8% of the jury made up rock experts, whilst, you know, 13.5% of our competitors were indie rock musicians. And of course, we had 5.4% metal. So, you know, that's nearly 20%. And if you add Croatia on there, that's about 20% of our songs were rock songs whilst 3.8% of our jurors were rock experts. So that already puts Lord of the Lost at an absolute massive disadvantage. And as you can see here, three points. And one of the categories that juries have to score the songs on are vocals. And if you have an overwhelming amount of classical musicians and pop musicians in the jury, they are looking for classically trained singing voices and pop and R&B style singing voices. And in this case, a vocal that is provided by Chris Harms of Lord of the Lost is going to be neglected, even though executed very well, technique very good. We need experts who are experts in vocals like what Chris Harms was providing so that at least there's people on the jury that understand that way of singing and can then reward it. You know, it doesn't feel very fair. And that just is evident in the results here. And then I wanted to look at Albania because this is another ethnic song. And of course, we didn't have too many members of the juries that were ethnic music professionals. And of course, here we got most of their points were given by the older members of the juries because this had slightly more of a softer approach. It had like older members also in the uh, group her family members. And then of course, there was a bit of a cultural element. Greece gave them three points, Azerbaijan eight points, Romania five points, and oh yeah, Moldova one point because of the kind of cultural element, but also it was very, despite being ethnic, very quite family friendly, very engaging. And I think it wasn't offensive at all. So that is why they got points mainly from the older juries, but absolutely none from the younger juries, which is very interesting. And then I wanted to look at Slovenia as well, because that's, you know, an indie rock song and it didn't do too well in the juries, despite the songwriting being interesting, having kind of like more out of the box approaches there. So 12 points from Serbia, very interesting there. But then I realised that the lead singer of Joker Out is Serbian. So I thought, oh, maybe it's to do with that. But I know they do have success in Serbia as well. Um, and then they had six points from Austria, which was good. We had six points from Czechia, five points from Croatia, again, because of kind of neighbouring aspects, maybe. A point from the UK, because this song, kind of indie rock, is quite popular in the UK, so I'm not surprised there. And then three from Ukraine, which is very interesting, and I'll go into this later. Ukraine had a mixed jury, and I think that kind of played a role in Slovenia getting some points there. And then I wanted to look at Estonia, because this was a classical ballad, it had a classical music approach, and she obviously has a classically trained voice. And of course, a lot of the older members of the jury were giving this quite a big amount of points. So we had, you know, a classically trained, I guess, jury from Azerbaijan gave it a point. Albania also had a classical jury, gave it eight points. But this across the board got points because it was musically safe, but pretty well performed, good staging. I'm not surprised that across the board, this did really, really well. So that was kind of successful in that respect. Very interesting results here. So then I wanted to do a bit more of a deep dive into each jury that didn't have a pop music based 
level of expertise, but more of a different approach. So the classical music jurors came from Albania and Azerbaijan from the information that I had available to me. And these are the songs that they gave points to. So start with Albania. So they gave it to Sweden, Armenia, Estonia, Switzerland, Israel, Belgium, Cyprus, Australia, Italy, and Spain. And then Azerbaijan gave their points to Israel, Sweden, Albania, Spain, Italy, Australia, Switzerland, Finland, Ukraine, and Estonia. So these are very interesting to me because as a classical musician myself, I can see why some of these were given points. So possible reasons for Sweden were vocals, firstly, she does have a kind of classically trained voice and her high notes had some good technique on them, I guess. And then Armenia, the compositional structure is quite interesting in that one. I think they really had kind of more of an avant-garde approach with that and some interesting classical instruments in there. Estonia had a classical instrumentation and vocal, Switzerland as well had some classical instruments, Israel there was just like an interesting vocal and dance routine so I'm not surprised that that got points, Belgium there was some extended chords in there, some R&B chords which maybe classical musicians would appreciate and understand, Cyprus it was the impressive high vocal so I'm not surprised, Australia there was some extended chords and virtual six solos in there so again not surprised, Italy, more of a classical kind of soft rock song and the vocals were impressive. So again, not surprised that classical music experts were giving this points. And then Spain, okay, you know, they got a point, but yes, it's ethnic. There's interesting structures and rhythms. So I'm not surprised that that got points. And then again, some additional ones from Azerbaijan. We had Finland again getting some points because maybe the genre change and the interesting structure resonated with some classical musicians and then Ukraine there's some R&B chords in there as well so that's quite interesting Albania also got points because of the interesting scale they're using potentially and the ethnic sound in general so yeah that was interesting to see there was kind of some agreement between these juries in terms of the songs they were giving points to and then the rock music juror came from Australia. They had kind of a majority rock musicians or um, instrumentalists on their juries. So Belgium got the maximum points because I guess they had some extended chords in there. It was quite interesting. Lithuania because maybe the strong vocals and backing vocals. Estonia, they had a classical instrumentation, which I guess across the board appealed to a lot of people. Sweden, again, the vocals and the staging were really good. Austria, it's a quirky song and it has a potential to kind of appeal to a wide range of musicians. Finland, there's elements of rock and metal in the song, so I guess the rock jurors appreciated that. Spain, again, ethnic, interesting structures and rhythms. Cyprus had impressive high notes. Portugal also was ethnic and had interesting structures and rhythms. And then Italy, I guess there's some soft rock elements in there. And if there was rock members of the jury, they would have picked up on that and liked it potentially. So that was interesting to me. And then we had a couple of juries that had a majority of TV and film experts. So Sweden got the 12 points from Cyprus. Again, unique stage show with the light box. Austria also, they had a good LED and a dance routine. Australia had strong staging with the car and the camera angles. Israel had a strong staging with the dance routine and the box, the light box they had. Spain, a unique stage show and lighting. Uh, Italy had a nice backdrop. They kept it simple, but it kind of was very effective in that sense. Armenia had a unique stage show with the colour projections. Finland, very unique and quirky staging and very eye-catching. Switzerland had the interpretive dance and the lighting. And then Czechia had the choreography, costuming and general staging, which must have appealed to TV professionals. And then some similarities as well. In here we have Belgium, you know, the Vogue dancer was quite fun. Um, we also had Lithuania, they had a really nice LED and colour scheme. Estonia, you know, it was a simple but dramatic staging concept. Um, and then, yeah, and that was basically kind of agreement there. So that was interesting to see. And then we had a very interesting concept here with the juries from Ukraine and Norway, who all had a mixed musical background, which was made up of three pop musicians, three classical musicians, an ethnic musician, a rock musician, one R&B singer, and one music producer. And Norway also had the best range of ages in their jury, the youngest being a 23 year old singer songwriter. So that was interesting. And they had some very different rankings here with songs that weren't consistently getting points, which I found very interesting. So from Ukraine, Poland got points, which makes a bit of sense there culturally. UK got points, which is interesting. Slovenia got points. 
you know, we had a rock musician somewhere in there. They could have helped Slovenia get points there. So that was cool. Finland also got the 12th from Norway. They had very young members of the jury and a mixture of backgrounds. So that would help a song that was a bit more out of the box, like Finland, to get points. Moldova also got the eight points. Very interesting. Moldova wasn't doing too well in the rank in the rankings, but they got eight points from Norway. So that was really cool. They also had an ethnic musician, I think, on their jury. So that's great to see. And then Spain got a point from Norway as well. So that was really, really cool. But also I heard somewhere on Eurovision History's channel, check him out if you haven't, he's got a great channel, that apparently the Ukrainian jury were voted in by the public. And that's really cool. So they had a nice wide range of experts on their panel and it shows in their results. They weren't doing what all the other juries were doing, which I like. And now what I'm going to do is kind of go through some of the jury results from individual jurors that really stood out to me. And I kind of thought, what's going on, you know? So the first one I'm going to look at is the UK jury. So from my own country, I know for a fact that we had two jurors on here that were ex-members of girl bands. So I know Heidi from the Sugar Babes and Shaz Ney from All Saints were on our jury. So the first thing I did was look at our results. And the first thing that really stood out to me actually was the fact that one of our jurors put Estonia dead last. Everyone else had her in the top 10, but juror A put Estonia dead last. So I thought, okay, who came last with everyone else? So I looked and it was Croatia. And Croatia came 25th with every single member of the UK jury, besides juror A, who had them in 24th. So they had Elika below Croatia, which was very strange. And this is also why I would love to see the reasoning behind each one. It needs to be published. I want to see each juror give a reason as to why that person was placed where they were, because I want to know why Alika was juror A's last place and why Croatia was better. That's what I want to know. That does not seem correct to me in my own personal rankings. So I want to know why that juror thinks Alika is the worst song of the grand final. And also the UK jury, which was majority pop music, placed Germany uh, in the bottom five. Four of them did, and then one put them 15th place. So that also struck me as quite um, a unanimous kind of ranking of Germany, very, very low down. So again, when you have a jury made up of majority pop musicians, especially members of kind of girl bands that made pop music in the 90s and 2000s, why would Germany be placed high? So yeah. That really stuck out to me. And of course, Finland as well was placed in the bottom five of four of the UK jury members and 16th with juror C. So that also was a bit strange considering that Finland are now charting at number six in our UK charts. So again, you know, it stuck out to me. They all put Finland very, very low down here. So then I wanted to look at a different sort of jury, and that was the Australian jury, who were majority rock music. And in this case, the Australian jury had Finland consistently in their top 10. So 10 being the lowest placing for jury E. So that really struck me because the majority of them were rock musicians. And of course, Finland has some metal elements in their music. So of course, they came top 10 with every single jury member and that kind of kind of hammers, hammers home my point that I made earlier that you know when you have musicians in your jury that are experts in a certain area they will be looking at the songs that they are experts in and having kind of that knowledge helps them to rank it and of course you know they all unanimously liked Finland and they put Finland in the top 10 so you know that is a testament in a way to the level of expertise and the genre that they tend to favour or disfavour in that case. And then I also looked at the Israeli jury, which had a mixture of different backgrounds in there. So the Israeli jury, three of them put Austria in their top 10, which is interesting, a slightly more out of the box entry, but of course a bit more pop as well. So that one appealed to the Israeli jury. Very interesting stuff. So, you know, it kind of helps, I guess, when you have a mixture of different backgrounds then the songs that might have been ignored before 
are getting points so that really struck me and then the Israeli jewelry also three of them put Finland in their top five very interesting and then 18th and 22nd place for the other ones so again out of the box entries doing well with juries that had a mixed you know a mixed background of expertise and of course again Ukraine in the top 10 for four members of the Israeli jury again not a pop song it's an R&B song and it has more of a dark feel to it Israel gave it you know seven points in the end and of course Norway was top 10 with all jurors from Israel slightly out of the box again pop song but with a theme with a kind of kitsch appeal to it and they gave it 10 points so that really really kind of again hammers home the point of when you have more of a broad background of jurors they tend to give kind of different songs slightly more experimental songs a bit more of a chance and then I had a look at the Armenian jury which I believe was also a mixed jury they had a member of their jury that I think was an ethnic music expert or singer so Spain had top 10 with three members of the Armenian jury and then the other two put Spain 11th and 12th so that really stood out to me again Spain as an ethnic entry got some love from a jury which has some ethnic musicians on it you know but also equally Armenia put Albania dead last across the board which I thought was very fishy I don't know any context behind that is there a reason why the Armenian jury would put Albania dead last across the board especially as Albania had an ethnic song so again that stood out to me I'm not really sure I can't explain that to be honest and then I had a look at the um, Azeri jury and they actually put G uh, Germany second place one of them Jura B put Germany second place and I believe they had more of a classical background so that really stuck out to me as well so those were some of the results that I thought were worth looking into further. So yeah, very interesting stuff. So it's known by a lot of the Eurovision fans that the juries are given four criteria boxes to score each song on, and then that helps them put together their ranking of all the songs. So they score the song on the vocals and vocal ability, the stage performance, the uniqueness of the composition, and the overall impression of the act. So based on those criteria, what I've done, and this is kind of part three of the video, is I have objectively scored each song that was in the grand final out of 10 based on these four categories and tried not to let my own personal opinion get in the way. So I've just looked at the live performance that we've seen on the grand final. I know the jury see a different shows, but we don't have that available to us. So I have basically just gone through each song, scored it, and then I've averaged it all out and basically kind of tried to predict what the jury points should have been this year if there was no such thing as the bias against certain genres, languages, if all of the jurors represented the styles of all of the songs, if the jurors were a similar age to the acts, that kind of thing. And then I've come up with a ranking. So you can see here I've gone through the running order and then I've ranked the vocals and vocal ability and importantly I want to clarify that the way that this has been scored and how I see it as the fairest way is to not score the vocals just on classically trained singing because vocals are not just about singing it could be rapping it could be yoiking which we had from Norway in 2019 it could also be what Chris Harms from Lord of the Lost did this kind of guttural vocal shouting screamo it should all be a level playing field and everything should be scored based on that not just singing because it's not all about the singing it's a song contest and it's not all about the singing so in terms of fairness this is how the juries should be ranking the songs this is a should of scenario this is not what exactly has happened so i've scored each song based on that and then the stage performance so i've considered things like leds i've considered props camera angles how it all looked on the television that kind of thing and then the uniqueness of the composition is very important in this case because a lot of the ethnic songs do sound unique and also there's a lot of lyrics that should be taken into account and whether the song sounds like other songs whether the song stands out 
that kind of thing that should all be taken into consideration and as you can see here with Sweden I've given them an 8.5 for uniqueness of composition and that's not because of all these plagiarism accusations I've just completely ignored all of that when I did my original review of Sweden's song I realized that actually the backing track can be squished into an eight bar melody and the skeleton the bare bones of the song is that long it's that long and if you're objective if you're a classical musician if you're a pop musician and if you're really looking at the uniqueness of the composition Sweden's song can be con condensed into something this big this big and I'll show you guys as an example <laughs> And the only part of the song that actually changes is when the strings come in this kind of Arabic feel and then it returns to this bare bone structure before. So that isn't a 10, I think. If you were really, really being fair and thinking about every kind of aspect of the composition being unique, it's not. And that's why 8.5, it still has some, you know, unique top lines like the lyrics, the melody, the stage performance, all of that comes into play but the actual bare bones of the song the backing track that's an 8.5 I think and then the overall impression you know how does the audience react to this song how do they come across on camera so I try to make it as objective as humanly possible I know some people will disagree with some of these scores but I've tried to be objective and let me know if you think anything needs to change in this respect but that is how I'm going to leave it it's a flawed you know analysis it's not 100% perfect but I've tried to be as objective as possible and then we get an average and I'll show you guys when I filter this Spain has the biggest score here so if you take away the bias against ethnic songs native language songs you know vocals vocal ability 10 not a single note that Blanca Paloma sung was out of tune sounded wavery it was perfect it was no perfect and the vibrato was there it was controlled stage performance nine and a half you know she really really had these interesting concepts in there with the lighting and the props and the camera shots it all came together really nicely so in the end average score of 9.38 and then sweden in second with a score of nine of course i've already gone through uniqueness of composition that played quite a big role in it and then finland in third with 8.88 because if you're thinking about vocals and vocal ability, you need to take into consideration the fact that this was wrapped. And if we had a jury that represented the contestants, we would have rappers on there who would hopefully score this one up. And then of course, the stage performance as well was captivating, interesting lighting, camera angles, props, etc. And if you move down the list, you get Italy, Israel, Australia, Estonia, Belgium, Armenia, and so on and so forth, with Croatia and Poland and the UK coming towards the bottom, and also Cyprus towards the bottom. And then what I did is I put together the percentage share of the score across all the contestants and then generated points based on that share. And of course, you can see these points are very close together, very close together. And that is not a realistic score that we would have at Eurovision. That would just not happen. So then what I did is I took a year where the points were distributed quite evenly across the songs, but a slightly more realistic approach. And I took 2021 as an example, because we had Switzerland, we had France, Italy and Malta all above 200 points and I thought that was probably a more realistic share of the points that the juries would be given out when you had a good quality amount of songs all being given points in a respectable way from the juries so I took that percentage share and then I calculated my own share which was based on 75% of what the 2021 results were and then a quarter 25% of what I had calculated here to kind of get an average sort of weighted percentage here and then the projected points kind of slightly more realistic of what an objective jury in my eyes here would be given the songs I compared it to the actual points received and you can see the ones in red were completely given less points than what I've projected here so Spain 121 points lower and then we had Finland 23 points lower so to me that kind of shows that the jury were helping Finland giving it what it sort of deserved in the end 
I guess. And then we had 22 points off for Armenia, 34 points off for Norway, um, Germany 77 points off. Again, like I said, with the vocals being underrated, not having enough representation of rock musicians in the jury. This really, really got let down by the juries. And then Albania 56 points off as well. Again, you know, this one had a good score in terms of the vocals. I think the, the vocals from Albina were excellent. Um, and they should have been given a high score. We had a stage performance as well, which was really good. Uniqueness of composition. This didn't sound like anything else in terms of the competitors. And then 27 points off for Slovenia as well, because there wasn't enough rock professionals in the jury. This wasn't rated high enough in terms of the quality of the songwriting and the overall impression that they gave on stage. And the song that was really, really helped by the juries in this case was Sweden, 139 point advantage here. But of course, you know, this did landslide across the board. It did really well. So realistically, I could have seen 201 points for Sweden coming from the juries if they were 100% objective, but 139 points. So she did kind of get an advantage in that respect. 35 point advantage for Estonia because there was a lot of classical musicians on the jury so probably favoured that. Belgium as well 31 points but still very similar to what they got. 41 point advantage for Czechia I think because this was um, performed quite well and I think the kind of political slightly message that they had was probably received well by some of the juries. 61 point advantage for Austria as well. This one did exceptionally well with the juries. I was quite surprised that it scored higher than Spain. And then 42 points here advantage for Cyprus. Cyprus did very well with the juries but I think the actual bare bones of the song again are quite weak. And there's not really enough going on musically for, to warrant this being massively high in the jury. So there was probably some other things that he did which helped the juries give him more points. So that's basically what I did in terms of predicting the jury results. So the next thing I wanted to do based on the research I did about the juries and the kind of percentages favoured towards pop music and not enough favour towards ethnic music what I did is I took the average scores that I calculated that were 100% objective from the juries and then I added some biases. So I added an age bias, so there was definitely older members of the jury here who would have favoured certain songs over others. Pop music bias as well, so some songs would have been favoured over others. A classical music bias, so some songs that had classical instrumentation and compositional techniques would have been favoured above others. Then there was the out of the box bias, so any songs that were kind of quirky, different, experimental, would have not been favoured by juries as much. Ethnic music bias as well, there would have been a lot of entries not scored high enough in terms of being ethnic because there wasn't enough representation on the juries. Native language bias as well, so any songs that weren't in English were at a disadvantage and then any songs that were in English were at a massive advantage. So I've added points on here basically for each song and you can see a couple of them here. Sweden had an age bias I think and we've seen that in the actual results. Pop music bias for Sweden and a classical music bias for some of the uh, compositional techniques like the strings on there and then an English language bias. Spain was out of favour here with the ethnic music and the native language but I guess some of the classical music elements would have helped with the classical jurors. Finland as well out of the box bias they lost a point and that and the native language too. And then a song that really kind of fell out of favour here, Albania, they lost some points. Um, and then, of course, Austria lost points for the kind of out of the box feel, Serbia and Moldova as well. Moldova really lost a lot of points for being ethnic, out of the box and being in native language. So when you add all of those things together, the average carried forward from the previous calculation that I did has now changed. And if I rejig this and make it in the correct order, Sweden is now the jury winner, followed by Estonia, Israel, Italy, Australia, Belgium, Lithuania, Cyprus and Switzerland all making up the top 10 of the expected results. And then we have Armenia, Norway, Spain, Austria, Germany and the UK. And then Czechia, Ukraine, France, Poland, Finland, Albania, Slovenia, Serbia, Portugal, Moldova and Croatia. And then I readjusted the percentage share based on 2021 and my own calculations and then projected the realistic points. And this is where it gets quite interesting because Sweden's projected points have now gone up to 223 
Estonia 207, Israel 173, Italy 167. And you can see in this column here, I compared it to the actual results. And this is slightly more interesting because when you add in the typical biases that the jury tend to have against certain songs and for other songs, what you get here is Sweden getting a massive advantage here of 117 extra points in the actual results to what I would expect it to get. So that is very interesting. Being a pop musician, having a very accessible sounding song really helped Loreen with the juries, but also Finland did exceptionally well with the juries this year. In my calculations, he would have got 33 points if he was lucky, but he ended up with 150. So to me, that's really changed my mind about how the juries treated Finland. I do think they could have treated Finland a bit better this year. I think he could have got higher score and there was a lot of juries that ranked him very low down. But 150 points is respectable considering that it was a native language, that it was rap, and that it was metal. That is very, very interesting. So the juries did help him in a, in a way. 39 point advantage for Czechia as well. I think they just genuinely had an interesting staging and the jurors picked up on that. 33 point advantage for Austria. This still kind of blows my mind that it did better than Spain. And of course here, Estonia had a 61 point disadvantage, I think because it was a ballad, maybe some of the younger members of the jury marked it down, I'm not sure, but still it got a decent amount of points. 33 point disadvantage for Lithuania, 30 point disadvantage for Cyprus, and 32 point disadvantage for Switzerland, 56 point disadvantage for Germany, they really did terrible compared to what they should have done, 42%, 42 point disadvantage for United Kingdom as well, but I do think that was because of the vocal performance in general. So this is really interesting, all of the other songs here did pretty much in line with what the juries gave them. So for instance, Israel, I was four points off, Italy, nine points off, Australia, five points off, Belgium, 12 points off. So it was all quite close, to be honest. And I do feel like the juries had some redemption moments, like putting Finland in fourth, you know, Australia being high up. That was nice to see. But of course, let me know what you think of this. I've added these biases in here, but there could be additional categories to add in as well. You know, there could be something about potentially um, costumes as well that could put people off or people could prefer certain costumes over others, you know, that kind of thing. But that was interesting to look at. So now that we've looked at all the results in detail and we've gone through a sort of predicted list of how I think the jury results might have gone if there was absolutely no bias and no political and cultural aspects in place. We're now gonna look at the poll that I had on my channel page. So I asked you guys, how did you find the distribution of points to be from the professional juries this year? And there was five options in the poll. It was an accurate representation of the quality, somewhat accurate representation of the quality, somewhere in the middle, a somewhat inaccurate representation of the quality, or a completely inaccurate representation of the quality of all the songs in the final. So overwhelmingly, the majority of you guys voted for the somewhat inaccurate representation of the quality of the songs. 37% of you guys of 2,300 votes went towards that category. And then in second place in the poll, it was somewhere in the middle with 23%. And then it was somewhat accurate with 19% and then completely inaccurate with 16% and then completely accurate with 5%. So the majority of you guys were somewhere in the middle and below in the poll, which is what I was expecting. I think, you know, the results this year were very, very skewed at the top. And then a lot of the kind of fan favourites and some kind of entries that were slightly more out of the box were put very, very low down in the jury remarks. So I'm not surprised about the poll. I think some people were very happy with the results and that's fine. But to me, this shows that a lot of people here want reform of the juries, including myself. So I'm gonna go through some of the comments that I thought were quite important from you guys. So Tiago M said, I believe that to keep the competition fair, the jury needs to be better selected. The EBU itself should form a committee to evaluate jurors from each country and not change every year without any criteria. We need classical musicians, producers, artists, music teachers. 
It is not because a person performed once at Eurovision that the following year he or her automatically qualifies to be a judge in the next year for that country. Now that's very interesting because there was a lot of people in the juries that I discovered had represented their country within the last 30 years at Eurovision, particularly I remember Albina from Croatia was on the Croatian jury. I believe that there was somebody else as well who had represented Romania who was on the Romanian jury. So I think I do agree to a certain extent because yes that person is a music professional in the sense that they are a performer but sometimes I think it has to be a bit more diverse than just past contestants. We need a wide, wide range of people on the juries representing different genres, different age groups, something that is a bit more in line with what we have in the contest that year. And then Henning said, what we need to do is just to make sure the juries are composed with diversity. If all jurors are from the pop industry, then nothing is weird if they treat Eurovision Song Contest as Eurovision Pop Contest. They need to become wider in who can sit in them, not only age and gender, but also where in the music industry they come from. And in some way, strengthen the originality criteria. Sweden and Israel can't be seen as original, yet the jury seem to think so. And that's exactly what we've seen in my analysis of the results. A lot of the songs that were out of the box were favoured by juries that had a mixed number of genres and backgrounds and age groups on their jury. If you had a jury that was consistently above the age of 50 and were all in the pop industry, they were going to be favouring certain songs over others. And that's important. We need that kind of transparency of who's on the jury, what their speciality is, but also we need a mixture of different backgrounds because then that kind of gives everyone an opportunity to get points as well. Hannah says, I think the juries are important. For all that most of them gave their 12 to Sweden, their spread between all the different entries will still be better than the, tele than the televotes. The problem is that they are necessarily marked down entries that are not in English. Almost all the songs with the strongest national identities, i.e. something other than pop and sung in the national tongue, are still undervalued by the juries. Albania, Moldova, France and even Spain. I'm waiting for an explanation for why generic pop songs and ballads in English are so superior. And that's very, very true. The juries are important. I do think that we need them to a certain extent, but they do favour songs in the English language, safe songs and pop songs, and anything that's out of the box, experimental, ethnic, and in a different language to English, all get marked down. And we need that open-mindedness on the jury. Ali Perfect Cosmina has said, I don't understand how the juries could snub Chris Harms' vocals that badly when he executed a flawless guttural, so Chris Harms from Lord of the Lost. Also, even though her treatment from the televote was much worse, I still think that Blanca Paloma deserved more jury points. I don't know how much more you could possibly ask for when she provided a song that was extremely original, staging that was original, vocals that were spot on, and a captivating stage presence. Completely agree with you, Ali. I think firstly, like we've seen in my analysis of the results, the juries did not have enough rock professionals and people in the metal industry, people who knew a little bit more about how to write a rock song and how to sing it, and vocal coaches that specialise in that type of singing that we got from Lord of the Lost. He was snubbed by the juries. Three points. He was snubbed because there wasn't enough people representing that style in the juries. So they were an unfair disadvantage from everyone else and we've also seen that with Karia, not a single rapper on the juries, not a single rapper. That automatically puts him at a disadvantage if you've got loads of singers who might favour the sung songs rather than rapped, you know. And also Blanca Paloma did deserve more jury points. We've seen in my analysis that she would have won the jury vote if there was absolutely no biases in place which is really sad. 95 points, it's still good, but completely underrated as well because she ticked all of those boxes that the jury are given, especially with the stage performance as well and the staging that they brought. It was very, very well executed. So yes, I do think that the jury's underrated Spain as well. It's very sad. Pompeia has said, in this occasion, I'm grateful they scored Australia well, although it could have been better. Those 21 points from Deaf Europe were a joke. 
are not Australian. On the other hand, very unhappy with them for not appreciating Blanca Paloma's voice and staging, so similar to the previous comment as well about Blanca Paloma. So yes, Australia did get a good amount of points, especially from those juries that contained more classical musicians, which I kind of get myself because as classical musician, I had Australia in fifth place and I appreciated the playful harmonies that they had, the solos, more virtuosic portions of the song. So potentially if those people in the classical music jurors had an aligned opinion with mine, I can see why that happened. But yes, 21 points from Europe. Yes, I understand that, but I do think it was because people switched allegiance in the final and all voted for Caria rather than the other entries that were in semi-final too. Safik Gal has said, all in all, I agree with Lorene placing top, but I'm just confused as to why Spain and France, for example, didn't do really well too. Also confused by Israel placing so high with a song that lacks any singing for the last 30 seconds. I saw people saying that the juries need to be bigger to diversify the tastes, and I agree with that. Yeah, I also agree Lorene placing on top, as you saw when I added the biases into my prediction there. Lorene won the jury vote in that case, so I did expect Lorene to win the jury vote. She had a broad appeal. It seemed that across all age groups and genres and expertise levels, Lorene kind of placed high across the board. So yeah, that doesn't shock me at all. But also, of course, Spain and France were underrated by the juries because native language entries don't tend to do as well with the juries and ethnic entries don't tend to do as well. Anything that's not pop based, you're already kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage. So yeah, it is really sad. Israel as well, she didn't sing for the last 30 seconds, but again, because the stage performance and the dance break counts as a jury box for overall impression of the act, and of course stage performance, she does have an advantage there. She is giving the jurors a reason to vote for her in that respect. And then Xander has said, I voted somewhat accurate representation of the quality of the entries, but I think you should also do the same poll about the televoting results. I think televoting's distribution of points was a less accurate representation of the quality of the songs, and in spite of that, as always, 95% of the people throw shade at the juries and on the opposite side pretend that televoting has done nothing wrong. Now I do agree with you, but I don't want to do a poll about the televote results because you can't control the public. The public have their own taste, it's something that we can control with the juries. The juries are like a control group. It's five or four in each delegation and you can control who's on that panel. And as we saw with Ukraine, the Ukrainian public voted for who they wanted their jury to be. So it is something we can control. The televotes, you know, that's millions and millions of people. We can't control their music taste. So unfortunately, it's a bit harder to kind of do an analysis on that. It's something that's just not in our control, unfortunately. And then Panic Pony has said, I think that might be an unpopular opinion, but I think we need juries. This year, it was just unfortunate that the points that were given were completely out of proportion. Loreen wasn't twice as good as Noah or Marco, yet she had nearly double their points. I thought that other points were more or less fair, or at least in line of what was expected looking at the years before. So we saw that also in my prediction analysis of the jury results, that most of the points that I had projected were sort of in line with what was expected from the juries, apart from Caria and Lorene, who were very, very much helped by the juries to get their high score. So yeah, I do think we need the juries in that respect. But yes, it felt like a little bit out of proportion in terms of the point distribution. And then Groot, who is also another Eurovision YouTuber, you should check out his channel. He's also a musician, but more of a music production perspective. So I'm sure a lot of you know him already, but he's got a great channel. So please check that out if you haven't. So Groot has said that Jury's not appreciating playful songwriting from Slovenia is nothing new. Yes, I completely agree as well. I think with Slovenia, you saw in my analysis that they were given points by juries that had more of a mixed musical background. And because Slovenia was this indie rock type of song, I think it was automatically at a disadvantage for not having enough pop elements for being in a native language. So it kind of ticks those boxes in a way, and it's a shame. So I think one of the things that could remedy that is having more rock musicians and more songwriters and people that play rock instruments in the juries and also having younger jury members who were a similar age range to Joker out as well, that probably would have helped them get more points. So yeah, it's a shame because they do have a very, very good songwriting approach with that song. 
very interesting second verse as well where it kind of the tone dropped a little bit instead of growing that was really nice so yeah it's a shame i completely agree with you and then master nut a has said i think ebu should upload the jury show i have heard rumors both finland and norway did bad on friday which is why they got a bad score people would be less angry if they understood why the jury slaughtered their favorites also agree i think it's definitely part of that transparency thing i was talking about where if we have the jury show in the public domain after the final potentially then we can see what went wrong why some people got more points than others if we're locked out of that as eurovision fans but also as the general public it makes that kind of expectation gap and that relationship with the juries frayed so that's the problem i think we need to see and i completely agree with you the jury show then we have a little bit more information and context as to why some songs did better than the others so thank you for all of your comments there on that poll it was very very interesting to read them and to see kind of what people genuinely thought after the competition so now i'm going to tell you guys my suggestions for how to improve the juries So the million dollar question is, the jury's having 50% control of the results, is that okay? So I do genuinely think that the 50% is okay, but the, th the things that actually need to change first, and then we can consider whether the percentage is correct, they need to firstly lower the age range of the juries. Let's have an average age of the jurors being closer to the average age of the contestants. That is paramount. If you've got a jury that is practically all 50 years old and then you've got contestants like Victor Vernikos who are 16, that's a big generation gap. Now, I'm not saying that we need to have jurors that are 16 years old, but we need to have more younger people, more Gen Z, more millennials. There was way too many people I saw in this research of mine born in 1974. And as much as we need the wisdom of slightly older musicians, we also need people who are more relating to the contestants because then that's just not fair if you have more experimental songs to have juries that are 50, 60 years old who are going to turn their nose up at something like Finland, for instance. That is the problem. So let's have a slightly lower age range of the juries. Let's have a nice average age of 30 years old instead of 44. Then something else we need, of course, which we saw earlier, is a little bit more transparency of the jury's ages and what their, especially what their background is. Why are they on that jury? What is their expertise level? Then we can kind of have a bit more transparency. These people have half of the results in their hands. So we, as the voting public, you need to know why they are in control of the results. So let's publish the ages of the jurors and their area of expertise. That is absolutely, absolutely something they need to do in the future. And also we need to have the EBU overseeing who's on the juries, background checks, making sure that the, the area of expertise of the juries matches the genres that are being performed by the contestants. The fact that there wasn't a single rapper on the jury, the fact that there was very, very few people in the ethnic music industry, and the fact that there was an overwhelming majority of pop musicians, despite pop music in the genre of the contestants being less than 50%, does not make sense to me. We need to have this kind of match between the jury's expertise and then the contestants. It's just not on to have such an overwhelming amount of pop musicians. And then the fact that, you know, a good nearly quarter of the entries this year were ethnic. That is atrocious, atrocious stuff. There needs to be a match between those two things. So those are the main things that I think we need to have. And of course, we need to have more of a crackdown on strategic voting, people putting one country last all in a row. It doesn't make sense. I personally think that the EBU need to really look into it and give people a slap on the wrist. Cyprus this year obviously getting four points from Greece was a step in the right direction and as we can see the juries are not all completely doing these terrible things to the results. As we saw they did help Finland in the results. Finland did well with the juries despite Obviously, a lot of people expecting it to come a lot worse. 
they did help some entries so it is moving in the right direction but it needs reform if they bring those things that i've mentioned into play so having you know lower age range a bit more transparency over the genres that these juries are experts in and then of course cracking down a little bit more on the political voting then we can discuss the percentage because if there's a bit more improvement in the results then the percentage can stay at 50 percent if there's no improvement then we can start talking about 60 40 split that's where i am so let me know down below in the comments what do you think about the juries at eurovision do you agree with my opinions do you disagree I'm very excited to read it and thank you for watching. There'll be more content to come about this year's contest, including reviewing the results of the semi-finals as well. And of course, doing a general post-contest review and a post-contest top 37. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.